Rick and Morty is an animated series on Adult Swim that follows a drunken grandpa obsessed with science and his always anxious grandson. This show, created by Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon, is an intense parody of the Back to the Future franchise. Except in this case, Doc carries around a flask of hard space liquor. From a distant look, this show is nothing more than space travel and vulgar humor, but fans of the show have taken a much deeper look into the meaning behind certain key elements and details of the show such as development of the characters, the past they share, and the realities that no one has even considered. Here are the top 15 Rick and Morty theories. Be prepared for spoilers through seasons 1 and 2 and speculations on the upcoming season 3. Number 15 Simulation In the fourth episode of season 1, Rick is trapped in a virtual simulation created by aliens seeking his formula for concentrated dark matter. While in the beginning of the episode we are led to believe that Morty is actually in the simulation with Rick, we later discover that he is just a fabrication. The Jerry in the simulation, however, is actually there by accident. He is kept busy living a mediocre simulated life for most of the episode, but at the end he discovers where he is as Rick tries to escape. Before this though, the trio escapes several layers of the simulation only to discover they're still in a simulation. What could this possibly be? Because it looks like you're inside a simulation, inside a simulation, you're still on the ship. Game day bucket go boom. Sir? In fact, there are so many intricate layers to the simulation that a great meme actually came out of this episode. There's a pretty haunting theory floating around, however, that Rick and Jerry are still inside a simulation after the end of the episode. The reason this theory became popular is because when Rick and Jerry finally do escape the simulation, we see a matrix-like room. This room almost appears as a hive and in each small cell there seems to be creatures of varying appearances hooked into the room by tubes and wires. We get a zoomed in shot of a particular creature which appears in a later episode where Jerry visits Pluto and tries to convince everyone it is indeed a planet. <laughs> the reason this theory is so popular is because viewers have questioned why the creators would zoom into the particular character, more than likely knowing it would show up later unless there was some reason to it. A good explanation for this would be that common creatures and aliens are featured more than once through the entirety of the show to give a touch of realism to the storyline. If viewers see aliens of the same type thrown in throughout the show, they feel more like thought out characters rather than something made up on the spot. If season 3 began with, you were inside a simulation, inside a simulation, inside another simulation, this would mean that there was no wedding crash or death of bird person. Rick wasn't in fact in jail, and Earth didn't turn into a huge tourist spot for aliens around the galaxy. As fans of this show with emotional favoritism towards characters, this would probably be a huge relief. Number 14 Mr. Poopy Butthole the best part of this theory is how many times I would get to say Mr. Poopy Butthole, but for now let's just use MPB for short. MPB is a character in the Rick and Morty series from episode 4 of season 2 titled Total Rick All. The episode takes a play on the 1990 film Total Recall in which a construction worker pays a company to implant false memories in his brain, only to realize that his entire life has been a false memory. In the Rick and Morty spin, an alien parasite makes its way into the Smith home and begins to multiply. The family is left not knowing which zany wacky characters are real and which ones are parasites. Once the number of characters grows and Rick is in danger, Morty realizes that the parasites are only able to implant positive memories into the humans' brains. Any negative memories had to come from true members of the family. I figured it out, Rick! The parasites can only create pleasant memories! I know you're real because I have a ton of bad memories with you! There's memories. The family goes on a shooting spree destroying the parasites into a mess of pink gore. One of the strange characters featured in this episode is Mr. Poopy Butthole. Beth stands in front of him with a gun and comes to a sudden realization that all of their memories together are good ones, so he must be a parasite. But as Beth delivers a deadly shot, MPB bleeds real dark red blood and begins to scream in agony. Oh, oh, is something wrong, Beth? Oh, oh, oh my god! Beth. Oh, oh, Wait, but I... Oh, Beth, why? I need an ambulance. Oh, There's been a shooting. My wife shot... Oh. Uh, my, my wife shot a longtime family friend. MPB was a real member of the family, and if you go back and watch the intro to this episode, he's in every shot as he's been there all along. The next scene shows MPB recovering in the hospital and the family demeaning Beth for shooting him. This topic is more of a debate than a theory, but of course there's theories within debates. Most people claim that MPB was real all along and we just had never seen him before. 
Others claim that he was fake and this was just a twist end thrown in by the creators. But the most popular theory is that we are following a different universe. Infinite realities mean that the creators could easily slip us into a different universe than usual and we wouldn't even know it. It also means that two universes could be exactly alike aside from very small details. Therefore, MPB could have existed all along in this universe and we were only unaware because we had never visited this universe before. In fact, there could be all kinds of differences in this universe that we don't notice. This would also explain MPB being thrown into the intro without explanation. A common plot hole brought along with this theory is that Rick brought the parasite in on crystal rocks he gathered from episode 2 of season 2, which we assume to be the usual Rick universe we follow. Again, this could still have happened in the universe with MPB, as two universes can be exactly the same aside from small details. In fact, there's probably a universe where the total Rick all episode still happened but MPB wasn't involved. Furthermore, a later theory actually brings that plot hole into play and makes the existence of MPB more possible than ever. Of course, this isn't the only fan theory and it's not necessarily the truth, but it seems to be the most popular explanation. What makes this theory creepy is the whole idea of just how identical realities can be. You could slip into a new universe reality or timeline and not even notice. You could go about your whole life without even realizing you had switched. This concept has actually been explored plenty in real life with interdimensional creatures and of course the notorious Berenstein Bears theory. Number 13 Many Mortys While this theory is connected to another more intricate theory, we will leave it as its own for now. In the season 1 episode Close Rick Counters of the Rick Kind, we learn that there are infinite numbers of Ricks and Mortys from infinite universes. Most Ricks are not above the idea of stealing Mortys from other timelines for their own use. And there are even a couple of Ricks that don't have Mortys either from them being stolen or from the Rick in that timeline never having kids. In this episode Rick also explains that he is the Rickiest Rick and hangs with the Mortiest Morty. So we assume that this Rick and this Morty belong together and have been working on the same timeline since the beginning. However, in relation to the evil Morty theory which we will get to later, it's possible that Rick either came to this universe from another one and that this is not his original Morty, or that he possibly even stole this Morty and brought him to the current universe we are viewing. The reason for this theory is that Rick seems to often have memories of Morty as a baby, and there's even a photo of Rick holding Morty in Bird Person's home. As we know, according to this universe's timeline, it couldn't be possible because Rick didn't come back into Beth's life until a long 20 year absence. Considering Morty is only about 14 or 15, this couldn't be possible. Other explanations include that Rick was visiting without Beth's knowledge, but the idea of a different Morty is much more widely accepted in the fandom. Something different from the evil Morty theory is that Rick didn't have anything to do with this switch up, and that Morty was actually the one to slip into the place of the original C-127 Morty. He could be working with the Galactic Federation, he could be a Morty working for evil Morty to collect evidence or really any number of things. Since this show is heavily based on the bleak, unpredictable concept of reality, anything could have happened along the way. Morty could have even been a droid or fabrication. This theory adds a dark layer to the show's feel of existentialism that we don't really know who we are surrounded by. Even those that we consider family could be total strangers slipping in from another dimension. If there's one thing this series is sure to do, it's cause a total existential crisis within its viewers. Number 12 Rick's Flask Most viewers take Rick's flask at face value and assume it's an alcoholic drink of some kind. It would explain Rick being hammered half the time, his constant burping and his slurring. This theory suggests that the concoction is something much stronger and much different. In the very first episode of season 1, after Rick forces Morty to lodge megatree seeds up his butt, he also tells him that the seeds will make him extremely smart and that he will shortly lose control of his motor skills. According to this theory, Rick is in fact drinking a liquefied version of the tree seeds. To avoid losing control of his body, he drinks it constantly and could have possibly built up a tolerance which prevents this horrible side effect from happening. To avoid losing control of his body, he drinks it constantly and could have possibly built up a tolerance which prevents this horrible side effect from happening. Or considering the genius that Rick is, he could have also invented an antidote. This theory can be proven because Rick is seemingly some sort of genius and when he is stealing the seeds, he explains that they're very important to his work. It would make sense that the seed liquid would be pretty important to a mad scientist. When Morty begins to lose control of his motor functions, he drools a light green liquid from his mouth, just like Rick throughout most of the series. Furthermore, while Rick does always seem to be under the influence, 
He only seems truly wasted when he's drinking from the large green bottles with X's on them. Even in the episode Rixie Business, Rick is drinking from a red solo cup and not his usual flask. It would be assumed that if he has a constant supply of liquor in his flask, he would just drink from there. And again, he seems more drunk from whatever is in that cup than what's in his usual flask. Doing this would also help Rick to stay one step ahead of all the other Ricks, thus making him the Rickiest Rick. Number 11. Unity is Beth's Mother In the episode Autoerotic Assimilation, we meet Unity who is a collective hive mind and the former lover of Rick. It's clear throughout the episode that they had a whirlwind romance that probably ended either very badly or very abruptly. Unity's abilities mean that she can control the minds of literally millions of people. She uses this power to build utopian societies or get wasted and have orgies with Rick. Since Unity can take over the mind of anyone, any race, gender, or species, there's a theory that Unity took over the mind of the human that became Beth's mother. According to this, she either chose a human so she could have a fully human baby with Rick, or it was a complete accident and Rick wound up stuck with Beth's birth mother out of sheer guilt. As was later proven in this episode, Unity will do anything in her power to please Rick and keep him happy. Aside from the fact that she probably loves him, it's unclear why she goes to such great lengths for him. It can be assumed that she has always done this, which would explain her overtaking a human to provide Rick with a family. Rick explains that Morty is like a human shield, so maybe he wanted a human baby to shield him, but the whole situation didn't work out. If this was true, it would mean that Unity didn't maintain a relationship with Beth because she didn't see her as a dog daughter, but as more of a tool in Rick's bigger plot. It's possible that Rick changed his mind though, as he seems more caring than first glance would allow. In this case, Unity could become upset or jealous and left the human mother, the baby, and Rick as a family of their own. If this was an accident, this would also explain why Unity had no interest in being in Beth's life. Since it wasn't her body and she likely wasn't present for the pregnancy, she might not feel a motherly connection to Beth. This also makes the entire idea pretty sick as that would mean this human female just woke up next to Rick one day realizing she was pregnant. A sub-theory of this is that Unity was living in the mind of Beth's mother just to try and live a perfect life with Rick. When things went wrong, however, she released Beth's mom and either caused her to die or literally killed her. Rick almost commits suicide after a fallout with Unity, but seems to flow through the series pretty easily, rarely mentioning the death of Beth's mother. This also lends to the theory in certain ways. This theory does add up in specific areas and we can only hope for future insight on Beth's mother so that we can add more pieces together or completely abandon this theory. Either way, if this were to be true, it's pretty creepy. Even for an extraterrestrial hive mind, murder is pretty dark. Number 10. Rick Committed Suicide this theory is inspired by Reddit user DJ Jazzy Dwarf. Since Rick can freely move through different parallel universes, and since there are so many theories and speculations that this Rick isn't the Rick originally belonging to this reality, there's a theory that the original Rick committed suicide. As we know in this timeline, Rick left Beth's life for several years. We also know in the episode Autoerotic Assimilation, Rick attempted suicide but failed. In the episode Rick Potion Number 9, after Rick ruins the world that they're living in, and they jump to one where that Rick and Morty die, he doesn't seem affected by his own dead body. He explains that he knows exactly what to do in the situation and says that you only get a few of these. This means that Rick has had experiences with his own dead body before, so there'd be no surprise if Rick committed suicide in one of those realities and the Rick we are currently following just jumped in to take his place. There's a similar theory to this that Rick got his family accidentally killed in another timeline. This would explain his alcoholism and depression, despite other Ricks such as those on the council that seem to not suffer from these same problems. In fact, following the series we've yet to come across another Rick with alcoholism. Most of the Ricks seen are either on the council, working as guards, salesmen, or just seem generally more cleaned up than the Rick we all know and love. The latter of these theories could explain the photos of Rick with Morty as an infant, as he could have had these memories from the timeline he destroyed. We can only hope that more clues will come about in the next season to tip us off about Rick's relationship with Morty in his infancy. Number 9. Rick left Beth so she would have Summer This theory is a little odd, but it does add up. We see Morty in a multitude of universes, yet we don't see the same for Summer. We hardly hear much of Summer's existence and in the episode Intergalactic Cable when she wears the special goggles that looks into other realities, 
She doesn't exist in many of them. She surfs through stations on the goggles and continuously reaches an error where no data is found. I don't see anything. Well, you should select a different timeline. I mean, if your father and I achieved our dreams, there's a chance you weren't even born. That came out wrong. That came out very wrong. Fine. I'll find a world where you bothered to have me. We're playing Yahtzee. According to this theory, Rick left Beth's life so she would rebel and have unprotected sex with Jerry. This could explain that in several realities Rick didn't leave or Beth decided not to rebel. Or as the episode displays, she does get an abortion. It's kind of uncertain as to why Rick would want this, but it could be assumed that he was hoping for a grandson that he could teach and travel with, like he does with Morty, in the hopes of his grandson following in his footsteps. Along with this theory is that Rick didn't come back into Beth's life for so long because he didn't want a granddaughter, and when Morty was born he knew he couldn't be around until he was old enough to join in adventures. This seems pretty selfish, even for the self-evolved Rick Sanchez. It's clear that he does care for those around him, even if he likes to act like he doesn't. But the theory does add up when we consider Summer's existence and Rick's stronger bond with Morty. Number 8. Rick is Morty This theory has several different variations of itself floating around the web, but the overall idea is that the Rick we seem to follow is actually Morty. The theory explains that since the Rick of this timeline never came back into Beth's life, possibly committing suicide, being imprisoned, or just disappearing in the mess of space travel, a Morty from the future came in and took his place. In the pilot episode of the series, Rick does have the ability to time travel, even though it isn't a key concept in the show. The creators have admitted that time travel is too complicated and overdone so they avoid it as a major plot point, but this short scene from the episode does prove that it's possible and Rick is capable. We never see or hear any other Rick speaking of time travel and it's something he generally avoids. This could lend to the idea that Rick is actually a Morty from the future who has come back for whatever reason to try and get close to this Morty. Some reasons could be he wants to change some tragic event, he wants to give Morty someone to be there for him instead of being alone, or maybe he's just running from something in his own time period. When this Rick returns from the future to get a broken leg serum, he does seem pretty frazzled and upset. He explains that women were all over him, but it could just be a lie to brush off the fact that he had clearly been affected. There's just one problem, Morty. One little hang-up. The dimension I visited was so advanced. They had also halted the aging process, and everyone there was young, Morty. And they had been forever. I was the only old person there, Morty. It was like I was some sort of, you know, celebrity walking around. It was, I was fascinating. A huge hole in this theory is that this Rick, who is allegedly actually Morty, resembles their Ricks from the council too closely to be Morty. Keep in mind though that Morty is Rick's grandson and it's not unlikely they would look alike. It's also possible this Morty invented something to change his appearance to match Rick. If this were to be true, it would add a whole new layer of complexity to the series. Number 7. Rick and Morty Share a Universe with Gravity Falls The Disney XD series Gravity Falls follows two grandchildren who get thrown into the wildlife of their great uncle. They work at a tourist shop in the woods and come across paranormal creatures that are sometimes funny and sometimes downright scary. In the episode Close Encounters of the Rick Kind, when Rick opens several portals to run through in an attempt to mislead the Rick guards, a coffee cup with a question mark on it, a notepad, and a pen fly through one of the portals. During an episode of Gravity Falls, the character known as Grunkle Stan is opening up a portal he invented and some of his belongings are sucked in. Those happen to be the exact same things that came through the portal in Rick and Morty. Every day it's getting stronger. Ah! They could have gone into any one of these. Oh, oh son of a... Oh, jeez. Oh, we lost them. It has been admitted that the creator of Gravity Falls and the co-creator of Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland, are great friends and have discussed throwing easter eggs into each other's shows, so it just seems like a fun thing that the creators did to acknowledge one another. There has been speculation though amongst fans that there is more to it than that. According to strange happenings in both of these shows, and the assumed ability to travel among realities of any kind, it's very possible that the shows actually occur in either the same universe or a very similar one. This has also led to a theory in Season 3 that there will be some kind of crossover, or a more obvious crossover of some sort. For viewers that are avid fans of both shows, this will be a great episode. Number 6. The Secret of the Ticket Full credit for this theory goes to YouTuber The Safe Point Guard, who has a video explaining everything in much deeper detail. In the episode The Morty Night Run, Rick and Morty drop off Jerry at a Jerry daycare before heading to sell guns to Crumbompulous Michael an assassin who does business with Rick. 
They then stop for a while at a Blitz and Chits arcade before the true heart of their adventure begins. The rest of the episode is filled with several events, but the most important are when Morty causes not only Crumbompulous Michael to die, but also several others as they run away with a cloud-like creature that Morty has released from imprisonment. Rick and Morty end their journey and return to pick up Jerry from the daycare, but are approached by another group who asks, do you have 5126? Morty doesn't have his ticket and the Ricks just casually trade Jerry's. Hey wait, uh, do you have 5126? Uh, I'm not sure. Morty. Uh, that's a Blitz and Chits ticket. What? Way to go, Morty. Uh, whatever. Uh, wait, wait what? Alright, come, come on, on Jerry. Jerry. Going back to the beginning of this episode when Jerry is dropped off, a close-up of the ticket shows that the C-137 Rick and Morty, the ones we usually follow, did in fact receive ticket 5126. This means that the Rick and Morty that approached the others at the end of the episode were actually the C-137 versions. Technically this means that the audience doesn't know what our usual Rick and Mortys did all day. This also means that it's possible that K. Michael is still alive in our C-137 universe. This theory goes on to explain how the following episodes do not occur in our usual C-137 universe, and helps to explain how Mr. Poopy Butthole has existed the entire time in the universe which that episode happens. In fact, this theory alone helps to explain the entire concept of the show's creators and writers switching up universes on its viewers with no warning. Royland has explained that he wants to keep the show as easy to follow as possible, but that he also wants a secret plot that only very observant fans can follow. Number 5. Rick Escaping Prison The finale of Season 2 left us broken hearted as Rick sacrificed himself for his family and was thrown into intergalactic prison. This isn't so much of a theory as it is just several very clever speculations as to how Rick will escape or be released from prison. The first theory is that K. Michael will actually break him out, as we learn from the secret of the ticket that the C-137 K. Michael could still be alive and be convinced by Morty, or even by his own need of illegal weaponry to break Rick out of jail. This theory is not only unlikely, but would be highly entertaining to watch considering K. Michael is a rebel Gromflomite, the same exact bureaucratic aliens that are responsible for putting Rick behind bars. Another theory is that everyone's beloved Mr. Me6 will save Rick. Mr. Meesigs are a set of characters from the episode Meesigs and Destroy. Rick introduces the family to a special box that will produce a cartoonish blue man to solve your problems. I'm Mr. Meesigs! Look at me! You make a request. Mr. Meesigs, open Jerry's stupid mayonnaise jar. Yes, sir! The Meesigs fulfills the request. All done! Wow! And then it stops existing. Oh my god, he exploded! Trust me, they're fine with it. Knock yourselves out! Throughout the episode, as Mr. Meesigs realizes he can't help Jerry golf, he summons more and more Meesigs to accomplish the task. After a wild roller coaster of miserable Meesigs, gunpoint threats, and a near crying Jerry, they accomplish their goal and vanish. This theory suggests that Morty or the family will use the Meesigs box to create an army to break Rick out. Considering how violent and determined the Meesigs are, this is not only an effective solution, it's also a very intriguing episode for fans. There's also a very ill-supported theory that Morty will access Rick's time travel stuff box and go back in time to prevent the arrest altogether, with the release of recent clips by creators at comic panels. Other theories include Rick turning into a roach to escape, or Morty posing as a judge to get him out. It's very unlikely the creators would choose storyboard clips from the very first episode of the season to release. No matter what happens, these speculations have kept fans on the edge of their seats as they await season 3. Number 4. Who's the Rat? We know that Rick turned himself over to the Galactic Federation, and we know that Tammy was the spy placed in Summer and Morty's high school to finally bring Rick to justice. The real question is, who tipped off the Galactic Federation to not only which Rick was committing these crimes, but also his exact whereabouts? There are theories that the Galactic Federation had been watching Rick for years waiting to make their move, but there are several much more interesting and much more complex explanations that have been theorized by fans. The first theory is that in the pilot episode when Morty passed through the spaceport with mega seeds up his butt and caused a huge commotion, the Galactic Federation looked into the situation and was able to determine it was Rick. After realizing he had his grandson Morty along for the ride, they planted Tammy in their school and she began getting close to Summer after she brought a Mr. Me6 to school with her. As it can only be assumed that only someone with ties to a scientific genius would have access to something like this. Another theory is that a family member has been feeding information to the Galactic Federation for years, in spite of Rick or as a ploy to get rid of him. 
Of course, the common assumption is Jerry, but more morbid and pessimistic viewers have assumed it's Beth. She possibly has a lot of pent-up anger and resentment towards her father, and she always wants to do her best to keep him around despite this. Could it be that she wants him around so she can keep feeding information to the Galactic Federation? She does seem to defend her father's strange scientific setup, such as the underground lab that he built. Your relationship with your father is psychotic! I'll listen to you relish the idea that my genius father is a bad person. Step out of your ego for a second and look at this thing. It's a monster. He might have it chained up so that it doesn't eat the planet. Right, because your father's such an altruist? I once saw him briefly forget the word for humans. Well, it seems that she is only defending her father because she is afraid of him leaving. It could just be an act. A sub-theory to this is that Beth was actually replaced by a clone-like spy shortly after Rick returned to her life. That also seems a little bit on the crazy side, but in a show with as many possibilities as this, it seems entirely logical. On the same note, there's a theory that this Morty is a droid or fabrication kept in place to not only catch Rick, but to record his crimes so there'd be no chance of him being released. Another wild theory that has become popular is that Beth's mother is actually the one behind Rick's arrest. Although the plot suggests that her mother is dead, she could have very well faked her death and dedicated the rest of her life to finding Rick and imprisoning him for his crimes. She would likely have some access to information on Beth, such as where she lives or works. This could easily lead her to information on Rick. Well, it does seem petty and far-fetched, it would be an amazing twist to this mystery. Number 3. Mortius Special Needs Well, this theory just sounds like an insult at first, there's actually a lot more to it and there's even some evidence to back it. Rick has explained that the only reason Ricks hang out with Mortys all the time is because their brainwaves work as a shield over Rick's waves. Well, we can only speculate that it's not the only reason for Ricks hanging around Mortys. It is supported in the episode Close Encounters of the Rick Kind, when the alleged evil Rick is working in a huge dome of tortured Mortys in order to shield what's going on inside. Oh God! Why would somebody do this? It's horrible! Well, one Morty's enough to hide from the bureaucrats, but you get, you get a whole matrix of Mortys and put them in agonizing pain. That creates a pattern that can hide even from other Ricks, mother... All of this being said, since Rick is so smart, it would only make sense that Morty needs to be on the opposite side of the spectrum to work as a shield. In Season 1, Episode 1, when Beth and Jerry are scolding Rick for keeping Morty out of school, they mention that he has some sort of disability and that he isn't as fast as the other kids. Oh, don't high road us, Dad. You know fully well that Morty is the last child that needs to be missing classes. I, I, I don't know what you mean by that. Can, can, can you be a little bit more specific? Oh, for crying out. He's got some kind of disability or something. Is that what you want us to say? I do. A fan theory in relation to this suggests that Morty is actually mentally disabled. And most of the adventures and mishaps that happen with Rick are just illusions, daydreams, or misconceptions in Morty's mind. In fact, according to this theory, Rick may be a drug dealer, a con artist, or just even your regular old nutty grandpa. But because of Morty's disability, he sees things around him happening much differently. Several people have applied this theory to several episodes and how there are more realistic events that could be happening. For example, the Council of Ricks could actually just be Morty going to court with Rick and seeing everyone as Rick and Morty because he is unaware of this new surrounding, and it makes him feel more safe to envision everyone as himself and his grandpa. Even if Morty doesn't have a more serious mental disability like autism or Down syndrome, it's very clear that he has anxiety and he could possibly have a mental illness on the end of that spectrum with possible schizophrenic traits. This would also explain Morty seeing things as more out of this world. Number 2. Rick is aware In the series, Rick is known as some sort of evil genius. He's hyper aware of his own existence, he can invent pretty much anything on the spot, and he's deeply educated in many different sciences from biology to the studies and creation of concentrated dark matter. There's more to Rick than his evil genius though. As the series has continued, Rick has grown as a character and as an audience we've gotten a deep look into his feelings and aspirations. Of course as viewers we know that Rick is a fictional creation, stirred up in the minds of his creators, but does Rick know that? One fan theory that developed from unknown regions suggests that Rick is aware he's a fictional character living in a fictional universe. Rick makes comments throughout the show that seem to be directed towards the audience. He breaks the fourth wall constantly. Something to keep in mind though is that no other character does this. At the end of season 1 as Rick dances with his grandkids Summer and Morty, he yells roll the credits, that's the end of season 1. Morty and Summer go on dancing but they don't talk towards the camera and they don't mention anything about season 1 ending. 
They don't even seem to be aware of the camera's presence. This wasn't the first or last time Rick broke the fourth wall, and pretty much every time he has, he's the only one to have done it. Something that has helped to fuel this fan theory is that Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland have admitted they plan to have a season-long mystery or secret. While most fans would assume this ongoing puzzle would be in relation to Evil Morty, those that pay attention to detail know that Roiland and Harmon wouldn't go with something so simple and in your face. While there are huge mysteries in the show that can be easily followed, Having something more in the background that most viewers wouldn't even think about is much more their style. Viewers of the show wouldn't even question Rick breaking the fourth wall. It's just a funny and simple style of comedy that brings the audience closer to a character. But the idea of infinite realities and universes in the show make Rick's awareness of his character all the more possible. Other small details that lend to this theory are Rick's catchphrases and the web of what looks like conspiracy evidence in his room. His catchphrase introduced in season 1 is Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, apparently meaning, I am in great pain, please help me, in bird person's language. This catchphrase was originally thought to be a parody of the common catchphrase trend within sitcoms. Even finding out the true meaning of the words, we could still assume it was just a play on catchphrases and a use by creators to expose Rick's depression. Many fans have theorized that using this face as a popular television trend is a way of Rick speaking to the audience almost crying out to the viewers for help. As for Rick's room, a collage of images and paperwork can be seen on his wall, and in that collage, a photo of what looks like Dan Harmon can be seen. Could this web of investigation be Rick trying to figure out his existence and put a stop to the creators controlling his life? A sub-theory that goes along with this is that in the final episode of the series, this will be revealed through a monologue from Rick directly to the audience. Who is ready for that heart-wrenching episode? Philosophers throughout history have published commentary on the idea that it's part of human experience to question our own existence, so it's no news that many of us have questioned if we ourselves are even real. That's what makes this theory so unsettling. Imagine knowing that someday your series will end and you will cease to exist. Number 1. The Evil Morty Master Theory this theory brings several other theories previously mentioned together and adds an even greater layer. It's pretty hard to pinpoint exactly where this theory started as there are so many variations of it traveling the internet, and it seems to be a pretty wildly believed theory. But it seems to have gotten the most attention from Reddit user Rickiest Rick. From this thread, which will be linked below in other sources, the master theory seems to be one of the most complex. Let's start with the secret plot that was mentioned in number 2. While many believe that the Evil Morty theory isn't the secret plot that the creators originally planned, it is believed that it is now. Having something that actually occurs throughout the series, that can be followed is a much easier concept than the Rick is aware theory. There has been an episode where Eyepatch Morty or Evil Morty has been featured. Through this, the fanbase gathered other clues and hints as to where this Evil Morty came from. Having this plotline featured up in front in the show also means that it's something that is likely to return and be built on. While this doesn't mean that the Rick is aware theory, or any other theory for that matter, isn't true, it's just the simple fact that this one would be easier to build upon so the fanbase has accepted it more. We have learned not only through other theories, but several obvious key features of the show, that there are infinite universes in which several variations of Rick and Morty exist. Some Ricks, such as Doofus Rick from Season 1 Episode 10, don't have a Morty. From this concept, we can assume that there are Mortys out there without Ricks as well. And from the Rick Council, we can also see that there are not only different appearing versions of Rick and Morty, but also different species of them as well. Just keep this in mind. Also from Season 1 Episode 10, we can see that while there seems to be an infinite amount of realities, there's a limited access to them. While Rick constantly pressures on the idea that realities are infinite, he also uses phrases such as, a few dozen versions of me, a couple thousand of me, or in the episode Rick portion number 9 he says we only get 3 or 4 more of these tops, while referring to replacing themselves in an alternate universe. This idea has likely been brought to us because Ricks only keep tabs on universes, realities, Ricks and Mortys that may be used to them. Rick seems to have special tools and devices which helps him filter through the infinity of existence and access only the things, places, and people that would be of use to him. This explains why in Season 1 Episode 10, the evil Rick says he is only a few steps above a regular Rick, or C-137 Rick aka the Rickiest Rick. 
There should be an infinite amount of ricks between them, but they're not presented on the scale for whatever reason. Another thing to just keep in mind, in episode 10, Close Rick Counters of the Rick Kind, we find out that someone is murdering ricks across several realities. About 27 ricks have been murdered and a lot of Mortys have been kidnapped and used as a shield from the Council of Ricks. When our Rick and our Morty, who we will refer to as Pilot Morty, find the evil Rick allegedly responsible for the murders, our Rick is strapped to a table where he is going to get killed. Evil Rick reads through his memories and sees Rick interacting with Morty as an infant, teaching him things and also performing horrible experiments on him. You're crying? Over a Morty? No, I'm just allergic to dipshits. Ugh, Tears pathetic. fill Rick's eyes and Evil Rick patronizes him for having feelings over a Morty. It is important to note that Rick states most Ricks don't care for Mortys, although our Rick clearly seems to have an emotional bond with his grandson, despite that being against the norm and despite most of the show expressing the opposite. Another important thing to note is that this episode started with Beth explaining that. So, Dad, guess what tomorrow is? Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. No. Well, it might be. It is. Fine. But also, tomorrow is your one year anniversary back in our lives. As has been explained several times throughout this series, Rick was absent for Beth's life for about 20 years, and the creators obviously thought this episode was an important one to remind us of that. So where did these baby memories of Morty come from then? If Rick was absent for 20 years and Morty is about 14, then he shouldn't have these memories at all. As the episode goes on, we find out that this evil Rick is actually some sort of android being controlled by Eyepatch Morty or Evil Morty, who we originally thought to be just another Morty being influenced by this evil Rick. It was the exact opposite, however. Evil Morty pulls the remote control out of his eye and stomps on it as the episode ends. The basic gist of this theory after all of this explaining is that our Rick and our Morty do not belong together. In fact, Evil Morty is likely R. Rick's original Morty. It's likely that R. Rick was there since the birth of the original Morty and either tortured him too much, realizing he was becoming too smart, or destroyed his universe and took the place of an either dead or absent Rick in the pilot universe. This would explain why Evil Morty hates all of the Rick kind, why he wants to frame our Rick for the crimes of murdering and kidnapping, and why his last words through the Evil Rick android is do it, do your worst. He was likely encouraging these Mortys by allowing them to kill what they assume to be a Rick. It's likely he wants all of these Mortys to have the same hatred that he does and maybe even go down the same path. He could also have done all of this to get a sweep of our Rick's memories to better understand the relationship that Rick's and Mortys have, to let go of this hatred. But for the sake of drama, it's likely the first option. This theory also explains Rick's rant at the end of the pilot episode, Rick and Morty's 100 Years. But if you stick with me, I'm gonna accomplish great things, Morty, and you're gonna be part of them. And together we're gonna run around, Morty, we're gonna do all kinds of wonderful things, Morty. Just you and me, Morty. The outside world is our enemy, Morty. We're the only <coughs> friends we've got, Morty. It's just Rick and Morty. Rick is relieved to have found what he sees as the perfect Morty. Not smart enough to rebel or question his authority, but brave enough to go out on these adventures and actually lend a hand once in a while. We see this might not be the case when Morty begins ranting that he is a person, and Rick can't just treat him like property. So this opens the idea that all Mortys have the ability to rebel or become smarter. And that leads back to the idea that Evil Morty wanted the uprising of the Mortys to happen. Also, everything is wrapped up when Rick tells Morty, A cocky Morty can lead to some big problems. It can be a real bad thing for everybody. And when Morty inquires, Rick just says, uh, I'll explain when you're older. While this theory is long, complicated, and pretty much taken as the truth, we still have a whole new season coming our way which will possibly lay out more answers to our drilling questions of our favorite drunk screwed up portal traveling duo. This show has not only changed the game as far as vulgar and hilarious cartoons go, it has really opened the eyes and minds of all of its viewers. Go ahead and drop your own theories and ideas in the comments below and remember, no one exists on purpose, no one belongs anywhere, everybody's gonna die. Thanks for checking out this countdown. Be sure to subscribe as we upload new videos every week. It'd really mean a lot if you join the notification squad by clicking this gear button, checking this box, and then clicking save. See ya.